And there we go. Thank you. And so in most cases with a multi-factor design, we are interested in both the main effects, that is, are there differences across the groups for independent variables, we call those main effects, and the interactions. There, you wouldn't necessarily have to examine both. You, would, you, you, could, you could examine um, just, the, just the main effects, but, but the practice would be to examine both the main effects and the interactions. And so, Again, the main effects would be the differences between the levels of one of your independent variables and then the two-way a two-way ANOVA, we would have two different main effects that we could reference because we have two different independent variables. And so main effects are the differences between the levels of one of your independent variables. And then um, uh, we can use the word moderator or interaction interchangeably. So a moderator effect is the same as an interaction effect. But you can't use mediating in that way. Mediating, don't use that. We'll talk about mediating effects um, down the road. But interaction is the same as moderator. So I can play the two and use them interchangeably uh, because they are exactly the same. <laughs> so... Um, Kenny indicates that a moderator variable or an interaction uh, is a variable. Kenny indicates a moderator variable M is a variable that alters the strength of the relationship between the independent variable and the dependent variable. So a moderator variable or an interaction variable is a variable that Depending on its level, it moderates or it changes or alters the strength of the relationship between some other independent variable and your dependent variable. For example, probably not a very good one. I'm certain it's, um, I'm not certain it's true, but it, it comes from, from, um, the same source. Uh, we have two independent variables, uh, emotional counseling and whether you're male or female. So uh, you get emotional counseling or you don't get emotional counseling and you're uh, female or not female. And the dependent variable is depression. So for example, emotional counseling may reduce depression more for men than for women. Men. So we would say that gender or biological sex moderates the effect of emotional counseling on depression. Because um, emotional counseling, in this example, may work better to reduce depression for men than it does women. And, and, and so that's, that would be what an interaction is, an example of an interaction. We'll look at a lot more examples. You'll get to uh, work an example with, with your data at, as well. And so um, this is one of those things that when understanding interactions, uh, you gotta, you got to have at least a couple, of, a couple cups of coffee in you to sort of put all the pieces together, at least the first time. But once you get it, you got it, and, and you'll, be, you'll be good to go. But that is really only with two-way interactions. When we start looking at three-way interactions, um, there's probably no amount of coffee that will make that more <laughs> interpretable. Uh, and I see some people even think they can um, explore four-way interactions. And it just, it just becomes, it just becomes, um, um, uh, at, at some point, probably beyond the three-way 
beyond a three-way interaction, it becomes it becomes really a data mining exploration as opposed to there's no we don't have theory that would um, that probably would um, would take us uh, that far. At least that would be um, uh, my perception of theory. So uh, we do do two-way interactions uh, quite readily, fairly straightforward. Once you get it, uh, and, and and hopefully by the end of our lecture today and, and some work that you'll do, some reading that you're going to do, you'll get it. Um, at least with two-way interactions. Greater levels of interactivity you can do, but they become increasingly more difficult to understand. And um, then the, the note about probably don't, don't try to do anything beyond that. So no more than three independent variables uh, um, would be probably a, a best practice. Um, so our two-way ANOVA example is uh, similar variables. In this case, we're, and these are the variables that I just ran in the analysis. How much somebody trusts the media. And um, party identification, and whether they're male or female. And we would refer to this design as a three by two design, as we talked about earlier. And here's a table that gives us the um, cell and marginal means, right? Margin, margin, and then these are the cell means. So uh, in the homework, I ask you to give me a table that produces, that gives the cell and the marginal means. Um, And if we um, just uh, look at this um, for a minute, if if we were going to test the main effect for biological sex, what two means are we going to compare? Looking at that table, if we're going to compare, if we want to test the main effect for biological sex, what are the two means that we're comparing? Anybody marginal means. It would be the marginal means, what are, so what are they? And 3.36, right? So the main effect for, in this case, the variable called sex, is going to test the mean 3.4 and 3.36. Parenthetically, as you maybe you can't read the note, parenthetically I have standard deviation, and then below it it's the and the number of people in in each of those uh, in each of those um, groups. So the main effect for sex is going to just compare these two means. The main effect for party identification is going to look at these three means, right? 3.5, 3.32, and 3.16. Yep, and so um, the main effects examined are, are marginal means. <coughs> the interaction is assessed looking at the cell means. And you could you could um, you could look at those means and see if you can detect some pattern. That that maybe is different uh, across either female and male or Democrat, Republican, and Independent, and um, and uh, you you would be able to probably um, you would be able to probably um, uh, find some patterns there. And to the extent that you can identify those patterns, um, would be an indicator that would be an indicator that you might have a, a significant interaction. But we'll we'll get to we'll get to these in a minute. But just to make the point, this is one of our main effects, and our ANOVA is going to test that for us. This is the other main effect. Our ANOVA is going to test that for us. And then the interaction between those two is going to look at those six means in the middle. 
Um, anybody remember what what is the Levine's test testing? Yeah, and so what um, what will it be looking at? Can uh, what more specifically might it be looking at? Yeah, it's gonna it's gonna be looking at it. Are these standard deviations across these groups um, uh, fairly consistent, or do they deviate in meaningful ways? Because the assumption of ANOVA and t-test is that while the means may vary, the 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 spread of your data, that is the standard or the variance or the standard deviation needs to be um, relatively similar or not significantly different from each other. And so in this case, it's significant, which suggests that there are some problems, that there are some problems with our, um, with our, um, with, with our data. And we could, um, we could make, we could make some kind of adjustment for that uh, down the road if we needed to. And so it's just like the t-test that we did. If we saw a significant Levine's test, we did equal variances not assumed. Remember that? We did equal variances not assumed. There would be a, a, a similar logic that we would be able to follow for, for, the, for the ANOVA. Quick question. Yeah. Something that's super obvious. So if like female goes to 3.4 and male goes to that and then those can go down, what's that corner about? Oh, it's the overall mean. Okay. So it's just the grand mean for <laughs> the grand mean for um, trust in the media is 3.38, oh. and I have 986 okay. uh, participants, and the standard, the overall standard deviation is 0.64. Good question. Okay. So um, so far so good. And we can report that it's not informing dancers of the more frequency. But there's a big focus on solar wind and other concerns. And this is related to all the other assumptions of fall test. Yeah, it, in this case, I think if if this were data that I was um, doing s more serious, not that this isn't serious, but uh, serious research I was going to publish. I'd want to try to discover why is it, do I have some outliers that I missed in some place that are creating this difference? Uh, but the other thing, if I look at, if what's the min, uh, it's 0 0.70, right? Or 0 0.68, it'd be the lowest standard deviation. And then the highest is 0 0.77, 0 0.79. That doesn't seem like it. These don't seem like they're all that different to me, even though the test suggests that at least those are meaningful. Because that's the that's the most extreme. It suggests that at least these two are meaningfully different from each other. But 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 if just looking at that, I I would not. I don't know. That just doesn't seem like it's good. If this was one point six eight and this was 0.79, then I then I'd be really nervous about something. <coughs> needs to get fixed in order to have some confidence that my results would replicate. All right, so far so good. So if we um, just sort of take, we're good? Um, so we can run the, the tests Similar to what I did just before the break, we get an ANOVA table that looks like this. And we can see that we have um, a significant uh, interaction. And so uh, female, it's asterisk times. Can you go back? Sorry, I have a question. Good, good. Good. Okay, so what's the logic with? Being bad that there's a significant 
the the logic is is the logic is is that the the test assumes that there isn't. Oh, okay. And the test assumes what right. that <coughs> the test assumes homogeneity of variance. Mm -hmm. Meaning similar standard deviations across the groups. Okay. So that, right. That's what it assumes. So rather than that being point zero zero five, which lets us know that it's too much variance, then it would need to be we like it greater than 0.05. Okay. Then we would have we'd have greater confidence in the result. And so if I were doing this, and let's say I, just, I, I couldn't figure out why this was the case, uh, I would probably report as part of the manuscript that Levine's test was significant. There's some there's some differences. Uh, the, 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 the variances aren't uh, homogeneous across the groups. And, yeah, and, and readers should uh, keep that in mind uh, as, uh, as, as they consider the result, um, which I don't think is a, a fatal flaw to your results. It probably wouldn't be seen as a positive, but it wouldn't be, it would just be a limitation that people could um, consider as their, as their um, and in my experience, the Levine test is fairly sensitive. Um, what's that? Except for the 53 and 57. What's that? Yeah. Um, it shouldn't be because it's not a part. That isn't a part of the calculation. It's re it's really just looking at the variance. But um, there could be there could be any number of things going on, and and and, and it. it um, it would take some. It would take some work to sort of figure out well, why is that, and and you could you could do that, and again, if, you were, if this was serious research, we would want to make sure that we did that. So, okay, the good, good, yeah. all right. So results, significant interaction. I know that this is the interaction because it says female pines or asterisk uh, party ID, and I read across and I see that it's significant at point. Oh, oh, point oh, two, two. And then I see that there's a significant main effect for party ID. And I see that whether you're male or female doesn't matter. And we could go back and look at, we could go back and look at our uh, marginal means. And so no difference here. Not surprising, right? 3.40 and 3.36. Not very different, and we would expect, we probably would expect that to be significant. Um, but there is a difference here someplace, right? 3.5, 3.32, and 3.16. We don't know, again, we don't, we haven't done the post hoc test yet, so we don't know if it's Democrats versus Independents, Democrats versus Republicans, or Independents versus, Republicans. we don't know which of those three it is. For sure, it would be the two extremes, right? For sure, it would be Democrats versus Republicans, because they're, they're, the, they're the two extremes. And that, at least that one has to be significant in our postdoc test. But there might be the other two might also be significant. We just don't know that um, without doing the postdoc test. Um, so this is a, this is a, a, a really a critical note. And, and we'll, we'll see this as we begin to unpack the meaning of this interaction, or not the meaning so much as the interpretation of the interaction. But when you do have significant interactions, that's you really have to start your interpretation of your results there. Because the main effects really don't matter, even if they are significant. And the reason why they don't matter is because the impact of one is conditioned based on the value of the impact of one of the independent variables is, is conditioned based on the value of one of the other independent variables that you have. And so there's, there's the, the main effects tend not to be interpreted when you have significant interactions. 
again, when we will unpack this a little bit and, and you'll, you'll see that, you do, there, I see that people do it differently, um, but in most cases, it, it's, it's kind of a convoluted message that you're saying. For, for example, we might say that, that there's a difference between uh, Democrats and Republicans because we have a significant uh, main effect for party IT. But because we had that significant interaction, there really is only a significant difference for, I forget if it's males or for females, as we sort of start to unpack it. So it's not, it's not, a, it's, it's conditioned. It's not, a, it's not a significant difference across everybody. It's only for some of the people that are a part of, um, a part of the analysis. And so if you have a significant interaction, usually you, that's where you focus your interpretation and the, the main effects can be mentioned, but they tend to be less meaningful because, because, of, because the interaction is significant. Um, just to reemphasize our partial a to square calculation for the interaction is 0 0.008 small. And to get that 0 0.008, we're going to take our between subjects, sums of squares, which is um, 3.964, and uh, divide it by not, uh, not the total sums of squares, which is this corrected total. If we did, what would we get if we did? If we divided um, uh, 3.694, divide it by 532, what do we call that? What statistic is that? Sums of squares between divided by sums of squares total is what? It's an R squared. It's what? R squared? Or A to square, not partial A to square. So sums of squares between divided by sums of squares total is equal to R squared. Think back or look back at the notes from earlier in class. Either R squared or, or A squared. We're not doing that. What we're doing is we're, we're doing 3.694 divided by 3.694 um, uh, plus plus the error rate. And so we're only looking at uh, the error rate. We're not including the sums of squares for female and, um, and part of the IT, because we're partialing those out of our removing partial uh, those from our effect size. And so luckily, uh, we don't have to do this calculation. We just ask SPSS for effect size, and uh, it gives us it gives us that um, uh, for our um, uh, for our use. Uh, and so again, uh, this is this is repetitive, uh, almost uh, verbatim, but it would be uh, how we go about making uh, that calculation of uh, partial a to square. Um, and if we wanted to do a couple graphs to look at our main effects, and so in this case, we're looking at the main effect for male, for, uh, I'm calling it female here, and, and here we'll try to call it sex, so um, same thing. Um, and, and this is how much they trust the media on the y-axis. And we can see that there's not much difference, right? The difference between male and female is ever so slight. And as we know from these results, that difference is not meaningful. The other main effect for power DID, if we were to plot just the main effect, we can see that Democrat is higher than uh, independent, which is higher than Republican. So if we were going to look at the if we were going to look at the 
main effects, uh, that would be uh, uh, an approach that we could take. You could graph them out, or there probably wouldn't be a, really a need to graph them out. You could look at the means from a table like this, or the means from the descriptive statistics that you asked SPSS to produce for you. Um, and let's just bracket for a second the whole conversation about a significant, if you have a significant interaction, we tend not to look at the main effect, right? We have a significant interaction, and we would tend in the real world not to start here, but um, just for our purposes, uh, I wanted to go through this. Um, looking at the, looking at the um, post hoc tests, where are the differences significant for, um, for um, harder identification? Democrats, are they significantly, is this significantly higher than this? Is Democrats significantly higher than independents? Yes. What's the p-value? So, right, and is that with bond prone correction or not? Probably looking at the not, but it's significant with the other one too. So if we look at bond prone correction, Democrats versus independents, I get point, I get point oh three nine. Six, nine, a whole bunch of decimal places. Okay, test. How can I use the how can I use the least significant difference, this number, to get multiply this by number. Thank you. Um, everybody make sense? So you can multiply this number by three to get um, this number here, and it would, you would get exactly that number. So Democrats, using bond crony correction, Democrats have trust the media significantly more than independents. How about Democrats versus Republicans? Yeah. Significant, and intuitively you would think so, right? Because this is, right, it's even, low, it's even lower, so, so um, if that wasn't the case, Something went wrong, really wrong with your, with your analysis. How about independents versus Republicans? No. Not a meaningful difference, right? Independents versus Republicans? 0.15. 0 0.15. Um, you might make the argument that that approach is 0.05, but I think most people would probably say no. Yeah. Yeah. And this is one where, how about the, uh, yeah, if you did the, uh, least significant difference. So this would be the this would be the sort of the one that I was talking about earlier, right? Dang it! I really wished I had another significant finding in your study because I could surely get it published or I'd get it accepted at NCA. By the way, did you make your deadline? It's midnight. Midnight tonight. <laughs> Two a.m. tonight. Yeah. Two a.m. tonight. Yeah. Midnight. A couple more hours. A couple more hours to get to get to get your work. Uh, but this would be the dilemma that we talked about where. Um, with no correction, it's significant at 0.05, right? You could say P is less than 0.05. With the Bonfroni correction, it's not significant. Um, uh, it's significant at P is equal to 0.15. And so, um, make sense? So, uh, again, we sort of bracketed off this fact that we have this significant interaction. So we we wouldn't start here. We'd really start um, we'd really start here. And um, these are the two graphs that I got. Remember, I did the I did uh, I plotted uh, with separate lines for female, and then I also said, well, give me separate lines for um, party ID, just because I want to see what that looks like, and. Um, I don't know. I, I don't like that one. I, this one just looks better to me. I, it just seems to be. It seems to be easier to interpret than that one. Uh, but nonetheless, if you like this one better, your interpretation would be exactly the same because it's plotting. It's, it's plotting. Um, it's plotting the same three variables on the same space, and so you'd come to the same. You'd come to the same conclusion. But this, to me, represents that finding. 
better than that one does. And so this is the one that I would. But I would encourage you as you're working with interactions, do it both ways. Create both graphs and see which one resonates or seems to be e more easily interpreted uh, for you. And so. I would want just you pick one. You pick one of the two that work for you best. And thank you. That's a good point. Pick the one that works for you best, and and that's what you do if you're publishing. I, you wouldn't you wouldn't submit both of them, and uh, um, you might not even get it accepted. Uh, well, uh, it it seems. I mean, if yeah, um, it seems because you only have. To the, the two points to plot, and you get straight lines. Instead of when you're plotting three points, you get lines that aren't straight. And that, for me, I like straight lines. It just seems to, it's more interpretable than lines that that that. But nonetheless, this or this substantively would come to exactly the same conclusion because it, they're exactly the same data. Just they're just graphed um, differently. Um, and so what our interaction is telling us, um, what our interaction is, is telling us is that, that there, are, there are some differences here that, um, that um, cut across our two variables, party identification and whether you're male or female. One of the clearest signs that you have a significant interaction is if these lines actually cross each other. We call that a transverse. These, so this isn't a transverse interaction. But, but in oft, oftentimes, well, I should say oftentimes, but in some cases, you get where, the, if, where, where these lines actually these come close to crossing. But, but they don't. In some cases, they cross. And then that would be a clear sign that, that there's something uh, interesting going on at the different levels of your, uh, of your, um, of your um, variables. And so these are, the, these are not the marginal means that I have plotted here. These are the cell means that we plotted, right? And um, you know we might first we might first see that boy for male they're really spread out right uh, we have three point five six all the way down to uh, three point oh six for um, Republicans and so Democrats Democratic males trust the media a lot Republican males uh, really drops considerably. And the same isn't the case for females, right? They tend to be these. Obviously, they're not spread out uh, near this much, right? Where, where uh, they're in the same order. So hierarchically, we would say the same thing: that Democrats trust the media most, uh, then independents, then Republicans. Um, but the the means are um, uh, uh, quite different in terms of. Um, uh, how far they are, um, how far they are spread out. So that would be one observation you might make. Another observation that I might make is, boy, the slope of this line is a lot different than these lines, right? And so, uh, what does that slope tell us? That slope tells us that. Well, somebody interpret that. What? This, what is this? Yeah. yeah, and so is it is it that is it this group these male Republicans who trust the media? Uh, what seems to be a lot less than 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 the rest. It, that could be sort of the the thing that's driving a lot of uh, of, of what we're seeing here. And so with the um, with the significant interaction, we're just left with the fact that there, there's some meaningful difference when we look at the, in this case, male or female versus Democrat 
independent republicans. We don't. It doesn't tell us where that significant difference is. Is it is it this versus this, or this versus this? We don't know that. Or is it this? Another way to look at it is it this versus this, or this and this, or this and this. It, the the significant. The significant interaction doesn't tell us anything about that. It just tells us that somewhere in this, somewhere amongst these six, in our case, somewhere amongst these six cell means, there is a meaningful difference, and there might be differences. There might be more than just a single meaningful difference. That's all it tells us, and we're sort of left there. A lot of times what we'll do is we'll just do a narrative interpretation similar to what I did. Oh, you know, there's a big difference between um, big difference on the, uh, uh, for between Democrat males and Republican males, um, and that same doesn't hold for uh, females. And you might make some you might make some statements about that, but um, your significant interaction does not give you uh, at least statistical evidence that 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 is the only. Uh, um, uh, difference that's driving that's driving the um, that's driving the interaction, um, and so in our case, you know, one of the things that one of the things that 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 we um, can look at is that. Um, one of the things that we need to know is that we really need to understand our significant interactions before we can look at the main effects. And, and, and often case, and often, oftentimes, once we understand the interactions, the main effects tend to be you don't interpret them because you have this significant you have this significant interaction. And so. Um, in our case, it's it's a little bit it's a little bit better because we don't have we could say that we could certainly say that we could make some claims about our data that um, would be true um, for the main effects and for the interaction, but there would be there would be some limitations that we that we would have to to place in that. But in many cases. Um, if, if you have transverse interaction where if these lines were actually crossing, that is when you uh, you uh, interpreting your main effects is really if you interpret those, it's really misleading because because your lines are actually crossing across the levels of one of your other variables, and so it becomes it becomes even um, a, a bit more problematic. So. Um, summary, we still don't know, we just have a significant interaction, we still don't know where the significance is. We need to find out where that is, and to do that we do this thing called simple effects. And so remember for your homework, I ask you to do the simple effects analysis regardless of whether your interaction is significant or not. In the real world, if your interaction is not significant, there's 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 no magic happening. There's nothing going on here. There, you don't have to do simple effects analysis. In our um, for for our purposes, I want you to do that, whether the interaction is significant or not. But again, in the real world, it would it would not be. Um, you would not have to. You would not have to go through that. So, with the significant interaction, additional follow-up tests are needed to examine the nature of the interaction. These follow-up tests are referred to as simple effects analysis, and simple effects are significant differences among the cell means within your data. Precisely, a simple effect is an effect of an independent variable on a dependent variable within one level of a second independent variable. In some situations, um, you could write some syntax to do this for you. Um, 
You can uh, estimate it marginal means or EM means if you wanted to Google that or search the uh, syntax guide in SPSS, you could get or look towards the end of the slides that I have here. You can find um, you can find um, some way to do that with SPSS, but you can't do it with point and click. You have to write some syntax in order to do it. It's not you know everybody here would be capable of doing it. We're not going to focus on this. Uh, method in this class, we're going to take a, a different approach that in most cases um, in most cases you'll, you'll be just fine um, using the approach that we're going to talk about here and given that our Levine test was significant uh, it sort of supports um, uh, the approach that we're going to take here to examine our simple effects. What's that? The alternative would be SPSS can, uh, and, and it, it has, it's substantively, you wouldn't come to completely different conclusions, whether you do it the way that we're going to talk about doing it, or if you use uh, SPSS to do it for you. Uh, on the margins, it could make a small, some small differences, but it's not going to be, they're, they're not going to be um, vast. They're going to be, they're going to be, will be uh, somewhat uh, nuanced. Um, so the approach, and we'll get back to this in just a minute, but um, well, let's do this first, and then we'll then we'll do. Uh, I'll give you the. Um, I'll give you. Um, I'll do the point and click, and so we'll, at least we'll have that on the video in case um, somebody needs that. So. You're going to be doing two-way interactions, so or two-way ANOVA. So with any two-way ANOVA, there are two sets of simple effects that we all want to test. Um, and just using our example, we can examine media trust scores for Democrats, Independents, and Republicans for females and then do the same thing for males, right? And in that case, we'd have to do two ANOVAs, right? Because we have party ID, which is uh, three groups. We wouldn't do t-tests. We have to do ANOVA. And so we could examine media trust for Democrat, Independent, Republicans and do, do that for females and do that for males. That is, we do an ANOVA for males and another ANOVA for females. And then you would examine media trust for males and females and do that for Democrat, Independent, and Republican. In this case, you can do three T tests. So it's kind of the same way that you told us to run the test, like run it one way and then be sure we run it the opposite way too? Is that what you're trying no, to do? No, it's slightly different. It's uh, This picture um, does it better for us. It is, we need to test these three means okay. and these three means. So that would be two and over, right? <coughs> and then we can also test this mean, because we tested this and this and this and this. We still haven't tested this with this, right? And so to test this with this, we're going to do t-test. And in this case, we have to do three t-tests. We have to do this and this, and we have to do it for independents, and we have to do it for Republicans. Okay. And so that's what that's what this is telling you. With a two-way interaction, there are two sets of simple effects. If we only did one of those two, we'd only be looking here and perhaps here, and we'd leave out the potential differences here. And so we can, um, there would be any number of ways you can do this. The easiest way that I found to do it is the SPSS has a function called split the file, and you split the file by one of your variables. And then it gives you, it organizes your output by groups if you tell if you tell it to do that. And so you'll get output, you'll get output for males, and you'll get some other output for females. 
or you'll get output for Democrats, and you'll get some output for Republicans, and you'll get some output for independents. There would be other ways to do it. You could do select cases, and you could only select um, um, females, and then run that analysis. But this this is this is a um, uh, a more straightforward way, I think, of doing that. And so let me just show you with our analysis uh, that we've been working on how I would do that. Um, uh, here is our data, and I'm going to just do um, data, split file. And I want to split based on um, whether they're male or female. Um, and make sure you say organize output by groups. If you say compare groups, you get the same results, but they're not organized nearly as, um, they're not organized, uh, they're organized in a confusing way or, or more confusing way. So say organize by groups and then say okay. And, um, If we um, look at our SPSS, it tells me that I have a split on, and I'm splitting by the variable called female. And so then I, um, so if I split by female, what test do I need to run? Yeah. One way and over, right? And so I'm gonna, I can go back to my original analysis that I did, um, and I can do univariate, I don't need female anymore, right? Because I'm, I'm splitting the file by that. Um, and I need to adjust a couple other things. I don't need to do, well, it already took that. It already took my plots out for me. Um, do I need to do post hoc tests? No. Why? Party ID is two levels? Part, yeah, party ID is three female. levels. So I'm going to do some postdoc tests, and it, it, it left that there for me, so I'm okay with that. And then my options will all be the same. Um, I can leave, um, I want descriptive statistics, I want effect sizes, and I give me the homogeneity test. And so when I run this, as you'll see, this is the results for female equals zero, which of course would be males. Yep. And then I can, I can, I can interpret all of those results and see... Um, which of those three means where the significant differences are, and then I can do, um, did I scroll by it, where female equals uh, one, or females, and I can do that, and I can do that assessment, right? And then I can see where my results are there, and um, you would make the interpretation exactly the same way. I would start with, is the main effect? Let's go to, um, these are males. Is the main effect for males significant? Yes, it is. Is the main effect for party ID significant for males? Yes, it is. And then uh, we could look to see, well, where are the differences? And we could do a Bonferroni correction. And in this case, we can see that there's no difference between Democrats and independents. There's a difference between Democrats and Republicans. And there's a significant difference between independents and Republicans. And so if we go back and look, if we go back and look at this, um, if we go back and look at this chart, we just did males, right? And we were looking at these three means. It told me there's a difference here that this di mean, this difference is significant. It told me that this difference wasn't significant between um, between males who are Democrat and uh, independent, but it told me that this difference was significant, right? And so that would be that would be the simple effects analysis where I could discuss and you know um, you know where those significant differences are with my interaction. Make sense? Then we could do the same for we could do the same for female, but looking at um, looking at uh, that, there'll probably um, just be. So if we scroll down to female, the 
main effect for party ID for females is significant. And then where are the differences? Can you read that table? Democrat and Republican. Are you using uh, Bonferroni correction or not? Yes. Democrat and Republican, yes. And um, that would be it, yes. And so everybody see that? Well, maybe you can't see it very well from where you're sitting. Um, um, but we're just looking at significance levels. And if we go then one last time back here. This difference is meaningful, right? This difference isn't meaningful, and this difference isn't meaningful, right? So that's what, that's what that test told us. We still haven't tested the simple effects between here and here, and here and here, and here and here, and we do that with what? Test? T-test? Uh, but we need to split our file differently, right? And so um, in this case, I'm going to do um, data split file, and instead of females, I'm going to do party ID. And just to get back to the data, now we're splitting based on um, party ID. Um, don't leave that on by accident because you could waste a lot of time doing analyses um, that you um, may or may not be happy with. And then we're going to do t-tests, and I think we can do t-tests by, um, we're going to uh, do independent sample t-tests because we have two independent samples, one for male, one for female, but we have that, of course, by Democrat, Republican, and independent. So we have independent sample t-tests, and um, our grouping variable is going to be female. And I'm going to do 0 and 1 to identify the groups. And then our dependent variable is going to be our trust media variable. We can run the results, and we can see that um, party ID equals 1, which I think is probably, I usually just do alpha, so it would be Democrat. And, um, and then I have Republican, or I have independents, and then um, Republicans. Um, yeah, that's Republicans, this is Independent, and uh, this is Democrat. Um, and we can then interpret our, we can then inter interpret our, um, our t-test. Let's just do one of these. So this is for Democrats. Well, let's do the, let's, the one that, the one that probably would be most likely to be significant would be, um, would be for Republicans, right? This line, this looking at this line here, let's see if that one's significant. And so we can go back to our results, and we can go to um, party ID equals Republicans. We see our means, and we can see that um, equal variances. Um, we have a t-test. We can equal variances can't be assumed. So we're looking at Republicans, group three. We're, um, we're, we really just want to compare is 3.26 significantly higher than uh, 3.06 for the trust in media? Two-step process, uh, Levine's test. Um, and Levine's test is significant, meaning equal variance is not assumed. So we look at this line. And, um, and it would be significant. And we'd have a t value of degrees of freedom, which is 287, and p is equal to 0 0.022. And then if we did the same for independence, um, not significant. In this case, we could say equal variance is assumed because this is greater than 0.05.
if this isn't significant. And then just because we've done two of the three, why not do the third? Um, also, not significant. Equal variances are assumed because that's where you can apply. And we get um, P is equal to 0 0.14, which doesn't allow us to reject the null hypothesis. So that would be. Um, that would be sort of a full, um, full on simple effects analysis. One might want to nuance that some. If you have some specific hypotheses that you're testing, you might not be interested in all of those tests, and you might be interested in some subset of those. But you could certainly do that as part of your, as part of the analysis that you were um, doing. So, getting back to about where we left off. And so this would be just the, this would just be the results for um, some of what we just looked at. And, um, and this would be for the t-test. And so you'll do this if you have, if you have one of your variables has five different, has five different, five groups you'd have five different tests that would come up, that you, one for each of your five groups. One of the things that we haven't talked about, although we talked about it a bit on, uh, over the break, you need to make sure, you need to make sure that your grouping variable has uh, enough people, if your unit of analysis is individuals, enough people in each of the groups. And so let's say, um, I want to get to, um, So here's my, um, here's the data that I'm working with. Let's say my group of people who identified as independents, let's say I only had eight people in that group total. Do you think it would be good to keep them in this analysis? Why not? <coughs> it's a low number, yeah. What, what might low numbers do for us? What's that? May or may not. We certainly have would have larger margins of error because our n is so small, um, and so and there's not a magic formula that I can give you um, for how many people you need to have in each of your groups. Twenty five is a number that I see people sort of toss around anecdotally. That, that 25 would be a good number of people to have. If you're going to do an experimental study, have 25 people in, in each of your conditions. But when you do your, when you do your ANOVA, before you work through the entire assignment, you need to look at the descriptive statistics and make sure that you have a sufficient number of people and you really need to, it needs to be both in the margins and in the cells. And so maybe I have, maybe I have 110 independents, which on the margin seems pretty good, but maybe 108 of them are males and two of them are female. And then again, you have the same problem that, that you, you certainly wouldn't have much confidence in your results if the mean was based on n equals 2, which is what, in that example, would be what we'd have if, if, if we had 108 males and only two females. And so you really need to look at both the, you need to look at the marginal means and the cell means to make sure you have a sufficient number of people across your groups. There's not a magic number that I can give you it's kind of a gut reaction that you'll have to, um, uh, judgment that you'll have to make. Is 10 too high? Maybe, maybe it is in some case, or too low? Maybe it is in some cases. In other cases, we might be more comfortable living with 10. I would be nervous about trying to get something like that published because people are going to find that, for, people will see that and, oh, n equals 10 for that group, that's, that's too low. We can't have any confidence in that. And so it, it becomes problematic, uh, I think, pretty quickly in the world of um, you know, competitive, um, uh, 
publishing. But for our purposes, for the example that you do for this class, you'll just need to make a judgment and then defend that judgment. And, and I would expect that if you have some number, if you have some number here that's lower than 25 for your um, cell means, um, you, you probably need to tell me why you have confidence in that number. Um, and and it, it doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be a, a it doesn't have to be a dissertation that you write, but you need to give me a little bit of any write-up that you would do, and maybe where you annotate your results. You have to give me, give me some, uh, give me some uh, assurances that you've at least looked at that, and you're okay with it. And um, but if it's two, I'm not going to be convinced that if n equals two for one of your cells, th there's nothing that you could do to convince me that you made the right decision by including those two people in your analysis. So you, in that case, you'd have to redo one of your independent variables to exclude uh, those people from the analysis. And it'd be, a, you could recode it, would probably be the easiest way to do it, where, where if, if they're equal to, um, for independence would just be null uh, or um, missing data. And then they would exclude themselves uh, in the analysis. Questions? We've got five minutes. We've got a lot of time left. Um, where are we? Yep. Um, yeah, if you wanted to, you could put a little bit in the write-up for ANOVA or for the for the, that you're gonna do. For our purposes, I'm not gonna be, um, I'm not gonna be too much of a stickler on that because you, re you really are stuck with the data that you have and it, it may or may not be fine uh, in terms of all of the assumptions. There might be a couple that, that are, are weaker than others. And, um, you know, sort of one of the good things about both regression and ANOVA they are fairly robust when it comes to violating those assumptions, at least many of those assumptions. And so um, you, can, you can address those as part of your annotation if you want to, um, um, but you wouldn't, necessarily, you wouldn't necessarily have to. Um, unless you just have the low cell means, the cell means, uh, if you don't address that, that's fatally flawed or near fatally flawed. Uh, you need to, you'll need to address that. Well, I, I missed the first. Yeah, I think I, I'll give you some instructions, and, and, and sometimes I'll give you the latitude to ignore the, and the instructions, uh, ignore the assumptions of the test, because you have enough else work to do. In other cases, I'll be explicit about please test these assumptions where you can. So, good. Other questions, comments? Here's a write up. I noticed a lot of write ups that look like mine. Um, try to be more creative than I am. There's a lot of different ways to write this up. Um, Analysis of covariance is where we will pick up a week from today. Unless there's questions, I'll see you then. Okay. All right. Is that what our last homework is? Uh, multivariate. So multiple dependent variables. So that's all I want to ask. Since either of you can switch to multi-factor mode, it's still univariate. Yeah, the univariate re references the number of dependent variables. Okay. Mm -hmm. and the next one we're going to ignore it. The last one is more You'll have more than one dependent variable, yes. Okay, got it. Because I thought that was going to change.